There I was in one of the most intense staring contests ever, with my face incredibly close to the glass, and I could feel my competitor mocking me. I had lost every game, but I wasn't going to lose again. Ugh, not again. I don't remember why my 8-year-old self thought I would be able to beat a fish in a staring contest. They don't even blink, but I tried again. It's not like I had anything better to do. I guess this is my way of playing with my pet. What it really was, though, was the result of parents who had always told me they didn't want any furry or feathery pets, and there was no way my mom would be able to sleep with a reptile in the house, which only left the reddish-pink fish that sat on the counter. A fish doesn't need much attention. All it required was daily feeding and weekly bowl cleaning, and I jumped at every opportunity to feed it like it was second nature. It's my turn, I'd say. You fed him yesterday, my sister would argue back, and my brother yelling at us to be quiet. It wasn't like I had a strange obsession with feeding fish. I just relied too heavily on this fish for entertainment, as did my younger sister causing unnecessary fights and bickering. In a month it would die and I could guarantee another one to replace it within a week if we asked. When I was 15, and after four fishless years, my siblings and I decided to finally convince my parents, once and for all, that we deserved a real pet. But if we were going to do this, we were going to do this right. We needed a battle plan. We were against our own. These people knew our flaws and weaknesses, how to turn us against ourselves if they needed to. This is going to be tough, and it's not like my siblings and I had worked together very often. First we did our research to find out how this pet would affect our lives and if we were ready for that. Next we checked out websites of local shelters and asked them about certain topics like shots and possible behavior issues. We don't recommend adopting to dysfunctional families. Pets need routine and they can't take care of themselves. I remember the receptionist telling me over the phone. There would be no more pointless fights. It was no longer just between me and my siblings. There was going to be another life on the line that we were responsible for. After we had all our information, we were ready to enter the battlefield one more time and with much more confidence. After all, we were older, my brother could drive, my sister had a lot of free time, and we all wanted one as much as the other. It was a vicious battle scene. Shots fired, moments of pause to reload and fire again. With every one of their attempts to point out a possible downfall, we retaliated with three possible solutions. We were not going to lose this time. And our parents must have seen that as well, because within a week of debating, we even had a PowerPoint. We got two three-month-old kittens who will be turning three in March. I learned that nothing is set in stone. Always prepared to fight for what you want, especially if it's change. They are my constant reminder of the battle I fought with my siblings that ironically brought us together. With every bowl I fill, toy I shake, and even litter I clean, it's really self-gratifying to know that you can take care of something other than yourself.